Today on Timescast, President Obama addresses the United Nations General Assembly and the Palestinian Authority's bid for statehood. But Mr. President, in, in, in Syria, as you say, uh, clashes and conflicts. The op-ed columnist Nicholas Kristof interviews President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad of Iran, and Israeli policy becomes a key issue in the 2012 presidential race. I am for uh, Jerusalem being united under Israeli uh, rule. One year ago, I stood at this podium and I called for an independent Palestine. Everybody was waiting in the building behind me this morning to see what President Obama would say about the Israeli-Palestinian dispute, which has taken center stage at the gathering of world leaders here this year. I believed then and I believe now that the Palestinian people deserve a state of their own. But what I also said is that a genuine peace can only be realized between the Israelis and the Palestinians themselves. President Obama comes to the United Nations with his status diminished because his vision delivered last year that there would be a new Palestinian member by now and negotiations concluded has failed. As President Obama was dismissing the possibility of Palestinian membership in the United Nations, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas dropped his head into his right hand. In comparison with the difficult and unpredictable Yasser Arafat, who always tried to take center stage wherever he was, Mr. Abbas has been a very unassuming heir to the Palestinian leadership. So the Palestinians have been trying to negotiate with the Israelis for 20 years and they feel like they don't have anything to show for it and that the chance of a two-state solution is rapidly disappearing. So Mr. Abbas has come to the United Nations hoping that somehow by proposing membership that would break the logjam, but it doesn't appear that that's going to be happening. Although there was one attempt by the French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, to propose a way out. La solution est sur la table. Breaking sharply with the United States and with some Europeans, he proposed that the Palestinian status in the General Assembly be enhanced to that as an observer state from an observer entity, which it is now. The Palestinians, in asking for membership in the Security Council, chose the more difficult route, but also one that gave an opening to the Americans to try and get peace talks started before it came to a vote, which can take months. But they are expected to probably stick to that strategy, but we won't know till Friday when Mr. Abbas makes his speech. Few leaders raise more eyebrows and hackles than President Ahmadinejad of Iran. He's here in New York for the UN General Assembly this week. I sat down to talk to him about human rights in Iran and other issues. And Mr. President, tell me about Syria and what President Assad should do in terms of the uprising in his country. We have said that they must sit at the table of dialogue with mutual understanding and respect and resolve their issues. But Mr. President, in, in, in Syria, as you say, uh, clashes and confrontation made the problem worse, but isn't that also true of Iran after your re-election? In Iran, things were quite different and are quite different. In total, there were 33 lives lost. More than two-thirds of those killed belong to the security forces and innocent bystanders. Less than one-third were those who clashed with the security forces, with the police forces. So they were a very, very small minority. Now, President Ahmadinejad, for, for all the, uh, his prickly presence internationally, he's very soft-spoken, calm, he didn't get angry, but he was combative in the way he pushed back. The one moment when I thought there was just a, a little hint of, of, of maybe sadness, just wash over his face for an instant, was I asked him about the famous photo of Neda Sultan, the young woman who was shot in the chest and bled to death on a street in Tehran. It was incredibly sad due to many reasons. First, we have proof that that scene was staged and she was killed later, at a later point. This footage was shown for the first time by BBC. Our security officers and officials had no information of such a thing. If BBC is willing to broadcast 
this film, this footage in its entirety, any viewer would be able to distinguish whether it is as we say or it is as they maintain. During our conversation, we clashed a couple of times when we were talking about democracy and human rights. In particular, President Ahmadinejad several times suggested that Iran is a better and more robust democracy than the United States. Who says that democracy is stronger in the United States than it is in Iran? Who has said that? Really, in the United States, people are sovereign? Really, are the people willing to spend their hard-earned dollars in Afghanistan and Iraq rather than being spent on themselves? Are they willing to lose their sons and daughters in foreign lands for unclear purposes rather than receive those funds for education and health care? In our conversation, President Ahmadinejad tried to be conciliatory at times. He was indeed even friendly on several occasions. But at the end of the day, he lives in his own worldview, which is so different from that of me and other Americans and Westerners that it's hard for me to imagine any kind of a major uh, breakthrough, any kind of a major improvement in Iran-Western relations anytime soon. And Israel and the issue of Palestinian statehood becomes a flashpoint in the 2012 presidential race. This week you saw Rick Perry, the Texas governor and Republican frontrunner, speaking to Jewish voters in New York and laying out a strong case for support of Israel and a position on issues like settlement construction and the status of Jerusalem that is actually to the right of not only the other Republican candidates, but previous Republican administrations. Uh, I am for uh, Jerusalem being united under Israeli uh, rule. Conservative Republicans have staked out a very strong position in support of Israel, drawing on their evangelical roots. I also, as a Christian, uh, have a, a, a clear uh, directive uh, to support Israel. President Obama has found himself in a somewhat awkward position on Israel, in part because of the bold bid he made to get the peace process started. Uh, he pushed the Israelis to freeze settlement construction, something that some American Jews objected to and which Republicans have cited as an example of his bullying Israel. At the same time, the president has also told the Palestinians that he would veto any attempt at the UN for them to obtain recognition for a Palestinian state. We believe that any lasting peace must acknowledge the very real security concerns that Israel faces every single day. President Obama won 78 percent of the Jewish vote in 2008. Jewish fundraisers are important to Democratic candidates, including Mr. Obama. The question is whether the Republican use of Israel or attempt to use Israel as a wedge issue will cut into both his margin among Jewish voters and into the enthusiasm of Jewish fundraising uh, and volunteers. So there's a general recognition that this is an issue, even as Democratic officials say the odds of the president actually losing the Jewish vote are very, very low. The question is only whether he will get less of it, whether there'll be less enthusiasm and less money raised in that community.